Chris Witten, welcome to the podcast. What are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about relationships and how it's really the core, could be the core of your business. Awesome. Let's do it. Welcome to the National Association of Realtors Center for Realtor Development Podcast, the show that brings you on-the-go learning for today's top real estate topics with your host, Monica Neubauer. To get more information about the courses and credentials discussed here, visit our site at www.onlinelearning.realtor and use the coupon code PODCAST, P-O-D-C-A-S-T, to obtain 15% off the price of any online class. And now on to the show. Welcome to NAR's Center for Realtor Development podcast, the podcast for realtors, all about real estate. I'm Monica Neubauer, your host. Today, we are going to talk about great ways to engage agents and consumers within and with the support of the brokerage, the consumer-centric brokerage concept, as seen by one person, because you could do it differently. Every brokerage has its own culture and benefits. And it is crucial that you understand the culture of the organization that you're in and what benefits you have there, what benefits you, the agent, are getting from your brokerage firm, and how can they help you in your business and with your clients. Chris Witten and I talked about his consumer-centric brokerage model that is also about helping agents be consumer-centric and being well-connected in the community. I'm in a few national Facebook groups, and in a recent conversation, the agent was getting opinions as to which brokerage firm she should choose. However, that was a national page, and it would solicit broad, general responses. Most folks gave good advice about local offices and local culture and needing to interview the brokers there. Even as relates to national brands, you still want to find out about the local branch. So we need to identify the models that most align with our values locally, and maybe nationwide if it's a national brand and that's something that you like being affiliated with. Gratefully, we have so many excellent options. Do your research and get to know the agents in your office for future deals and networking. Chris recognized the power of connecting people to people in this tech age. Chris Ritten is the 2021 Rhode Island Realtor of the Year, and he has been active in Rhode Island leadership for many years. He's been on the local and state boards of directors. He was the MLS president for 2019 and 2020. He has lots of awards in real estate and from his community. You'll hear more about his work in the community and his background as a radio personality in our conversation. He is the owner and broker for Premier Real Estate in Smithfield, Rhode Island, and with two offices in Massachusetts. All right, let's talk to Chris. Welcome, Chris Witten. Hey, hey. Hey, Chris has a radio background, so I know we're going to love listening to his voice. <laughs> yes, I, love I can go radio. real low if you'd like. <laughs> <laughs> I love that I have a lot of guests who have much more calming, soothing voices than me. So I love to just relax and listen to the your voice, some other voices that we have. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to WNAR Radio. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. That's perfect. Hey, Maybe we're going to have you do over. our next intro, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Chris and I are going to talk about the consumer centric brokerage model. And before we go in that, I want to mention that we haven't really discussed any history about kind of brokerage models, which is fine. I don't know that we need to, but I do want to mention for those of you who may not have followed this kind of concept or the concept of being a centric, whatever centric brokerage firm is historically and long ago that, you know, it's kind of been a while since we've had this, the broker centric model was kind of where the broker held all the listings. And that was kind of even before we had the agency where we went to buyer's agency, which was even before when I got in the industry, you know, 20 years ago. So that's kind of been a while. And then we've gone to what a lot of people talk about having the agent centric model, which makes sense because the broker hires the agents and helps them do their business. So the agents were the customers, really, of the brokerage firm. That was who their client is. Even though the customers are also, you know, the public is also their client, the, you know, they build their business with brokers. Well, now we are talking about the agent-centric mar market model, and Chris is going to tell us about that. And it's largely about providing good materials, technology, information to help their agents succeed. So it's still agent-centric, 
but it's also to run their businesses well, making sure they're giving awesome customer service and experience. And so the agent-centric model lets the agent decide what kind of service they're going to provide. But I'm excited to hear what Chris is doing. They have several ways that they're providing this consumer-centric model while still giving their agents amazing tools. And so I guess you're really kind of both, aren't you? Agent and consumer-centric. It is. And at the end of the day, if you want to water it down, it's almost people centric. Like we're just, Oh, I love that. I love that. We're just everyday people and our agents, um, you know, the clients they work with, they're their friends, neighbors, family, uh, you know, former classmates. So yes, we're very focused on our agents and we're very agent centric, but we're also very consumer centric uh, as a brokerage uh, with the many different things we do with our community outreach that we have and um, so many other great things that we'll dive into. Well, when we talk about who is the customer of our business, you know, and I just mentioned how the agents really kind of are the customer of the brokerage. When you have an agent who's a customer and a consumer who's the customer, that's kind of a broad, who's my customer base, right? Right. However, when you put it as to people, it's like, what do the people need? And that kind of allows for that flexibility for the different markets in your, you know, who the different customers are. Right. And I think to talk about the customer centric portion of this, you want to dive in a little bit about the the agent centric portion that we just talked about where you can be both. It's all about people. So, you know, how I look at it is, uh, you know, you want to build a culture. Everybody talks about that. You you want to go where you're a good fit. And I know it's corny and cheesy, but I say this as being a realtor, especially in how we handle uh, the real estate business, is it's a lifestyle. Mm. Um, it really is. It is. You know, yeah, your phone's ringing and, you know, while you're trying to watch a Netflix show at 11 p.m., you know, you're getting texts. I get all that, but you also set your own parameters. You can go on vacation when you'd like, allegedly. Um, you know, you can, so there's a lot of things you can do. Um, so when you focus on your agents as people and you, uh, you know, you give them the tools that they need, but the tools that they need, not also, you know, the ones that make them great realtors, but also the tools that make them relate to the everyday person and to their customers, to their clients, uh, it's it's a different way to look at it, uh, but you know the one thing we so we've built this culture right and this culture for us and you got to I don't know if you've ever heard of hedgehogs, um, no. but so no. in in business in general you and I learned this years ago you have to have hedgehogs it's not Sonic and his buddy tails but it's uh, there are things that your foundation of your business is is built on that you don't shout to the world. It's almost like little ninja stuff. So what it, what it is, a great example is- The behind Wolverine. the curtain kind of things. It's what's behind yes, the curtain. Yes, the Moz. Yeah, pull back okay. the curtain. <laughs> so, so let's pull back the curtain on Walgreens real quick. Everybody knows okay. for the most part about Walgreens. One of their biggest hedgehogs is that they their location of their store is always on a corner of X Street and Y Street. Yep. Um, and their marketing, once you know this, you, their marketing slaps you in the face without knowing it um, at the corner of something and happiness. I forget their slogan. A few years ago, they used a, in their commercials, they used CCR uh, Credence's song down on the corner. Yeah. This is how, so that's one of their hedgehogs. So for, so for my office, there's two big hedgehogs that we have. One of them is that we are, we love to give back to the community in many ways. We, we participate in events, we create events, we piggyback off events where they are a helping hand in the community, but also we have what we call a Premier Gives Back program, which we'll mention in a little bit. But for every closing at our office, we donate $150 uh, to uh, a charity of our client's choice. Um, has to be a 501c3, um, you know, we vet all that out. But we're able to make monetary donations that are clients are choosing which one they wanted to go to, but it's coming on behalf of their agent. So it's a nice win-win. Um, so that's the one that, big- Let me ask you real quick. So when yep. you do that, do you give them a list of the pre-approved vendors in your area that you know are quality charities that are doing good work? You know, smart. What they- Monica, you're smart. I like you. So um, <laughs> when we diligently thought this out, 
A, we want to be very local. And that's one of our things too. So we wanted to be a local charity. I know St. Jude, though I've done in my radio career, we did radiothons for St. Jude. Right. They do great things. But as a realtor and as our brokerage, we wanted to give back locally. We wanted to give back to our local communities. So they've got to be local. They have to be a 501c3 because we don't want to end up being on the news being tied to right. yeah. you know some charity. <laughs> I don't that, like to see my friends on the news. No. <laughs> no, in a bad way. Absolutely. It usually is. Yep. <laughs> yep. So what we've done is we've taken every year, we've made it into a fun little situation where we have 10 local charities that are on our beneficiary list every year. So they change up every year. So that way there. Uh, we can control where this money is going. And by the way, you know, we're a 23 agent office and two and a half years of this program, we've donated $51,000 to local wow. so It's And it's all $150 at a time. Yeah. But so if you look at that in detail, it's, uh, it's a great tool. We're doing it for the greater good. So that's a number one, but it's also a great tool to get our agents in the door or have a leg up when they're going to a CMA appointment, it's, yeah, I can sell your house with the best marketing, blah, 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 blah. And by the way, when you close, if you choose me, when you close in this home, you get to choose one of these 10 charities that I'll donate 150. So it works. And then we're also building our network with the general public, which ends up being our customers, right? For right. customer centric. Yep. We've helped many of the local charities with some of the people that volunteer there to buy or sell. So it, so yes, it's kind of intertwined with its agents, agent centric, but it's also customer centric. You can have both and it works well. And we love what the program does. Not only do we donate a lot of money, it's advocacy too. It's getting the word out for all these different local charities that maybe a lot of people don't know. And now it's on their radar. So that's one of the warm and fuzzies that we do. One of our hedgehogs that, that brings it back. I want to say a couple things about that, that I just to kind of support you in this concept is a lot of real estate agents struggle with doing something good that's going to get them business. You know, they're like, oh, I don't want to call people just to ask them about business or that kind of thing. And yet you started out saying uh, being a real estate agent, it's our identity. It's who we are. You used a different word, but basically, you know, we are our our business and right. we want our business and ourselves to be a part of the community and be generous. So let's not worry about mixed motives. I mean, that's kind of the concept that people struggle with is kind of a mixed motives. No, let's just be, we're about homes. We're about our community. Let's be involved. This is all good. It's good. And the other thing that I love to say about that is that when you have, um, agents who are so well connected. Yes, you're introducing your clients to new charities and ways they can be involved. But you're also, it is local and real estate agents should be that interconnected. Correct. Yeah, so I love so much about that. And and I, I think it's fun. I think it's other ways for you to be connected with other people in the community that are good. I, I love it. So let me, I'm an analogy guy. Um, okay. So um, take this and this, this, is a great example with this premier gives back how we do that for every closing, but it also goes for most anything we try to implement at our brokerage picture spotlights, right? You've got a spotlight, somebody's on stage and you've got this bright spotlight in your face. Yeah. So a lot of realtors like think that they need that spotlight in their face. I sold four homes this year. I mean, this month, right? Great. We're, we're happy for you. That's awesome. But when you can take that spotlight, and as a realtor, then deflect the spotlight to the next uh, a subject or item, that would be your client. So a better way, which a lot of realtors post and, and, and share in their social medias and market is uh, so happy for uh, buyer A and buyer B, they just bought a dream home, blah, 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 right? Their little dog is going to love the backyard. Yeah. So you just took the spotlight off of you as the realtor and put it on this, the, that buyer. Great where the home run comes in and where a win, win, win happens is if you take that spotlight from your client and then shine it on something else. And in our case, we're shining it on the charity at the end of the day. Yeah. So our closing posts and our closing messages to, to market ourselves isn't I sold a home, isn't my buyers are happy that they just landed their dream home. It's um, all of that happened 
and they chose to give to a, a local veterans organization because their parents were both vets. Right. So win, win, win. When you get that spotlight on the third person, it's a domino effect and everybody shines. And that's kind of how we run that program, but also our brokerage. I love how you share, when you share that the they chose this charity, you take a little bit of the story with it. Yes. And that also is a marketing opportunity for that charity because people, let's face it, with charities, we're going to get, unless we have it in an auto come out all the time, we are going to give when we're reminded of the charity, especially if it's one that we don't necessarily use, but we want to support in the community. So those reminders for the charities help them get money from other people too. And can I tell you a secret that? Yeah, tell me a secret. So this is the inside skinny on this Premier Gives Back program is, so we said $150. That was the number we chose, right? This is where, again, it's agent centric, but it's also customer centric is our agents, they have skin in the game. They chip in $50 of that $150. My brokerage out of our pocket chips in the $100 mm. to equal $150. Yeah. So what does that mean? That means that I could, you know, we're not pushing that on our agent. We want to have that hundred dollars for that customer to choose and, and donate a good chunk. And, but we also don't want it to come up all of, uh, all of it out of our agent's pocket. So that's where you can be both agent centric and customer centric. However, we do tell all of our agents, listen, own it, say, you know, brag, like we just did. You don't have to give credit to our brokerage that they chipped in two thirds of the, like, no, Roll with it. <laughs> so and that's some of them may give more. You know, I mean, if it's one of their favorite charities, I feel like that's what I would do. If if one of my favorite charities was the one that was being chosen, I might add some money to it. Exactly. Or you yeah. might donate. Maybe you're going to go and say, "Oh, hey, do they do anything?" Yeah, they uh, the veterans that uh, you know, Project New Hope. They need uh, mittens this time of year. They need socks for some veterans. You might go out and and. Now we've alerted you to that as a customer, you may go out and do something, uh, you know, as a past Next client. Step. So, yep. and we send awesome. out, of course, a card ahead, uh, a month after closing, we send out a card on our agent's behalf with a little thing. Thanks for donating to blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So. It's good. All right. So you had another hedgehog you were going to tell us about. So the second one um, benefits us right now because of the lack of inventory uh, we, for my 14 year career and with my brokerage now go almost on 10 years, I wanted to be a listing agent, the office that lists. Cause as we know, as realtors, yep. if you brand yourself as a listing agent, the buyers make their way to you. Yes. I always tell my, my realtors, if you, if you're fishing with a lure, that's going to attract little sunfish or kivers. That's what you're going to catch. If you're fishing with a lure, that's going to attract the big, you know, bass. Yeah. Yeah, that's what you got to go for. So be market yourself as a listing agent. So our hedgehog, uh, every listing in our office for 10 years now has had a professional photo shoot and a video guided tour. Mm. And we've had some that would make an episode of Hoarders look like a palace. I promise you some <laughs> of the listings and my agents, our realtors go, but Chris, do we really need a video tour on this? And I mean, video guided tour. I mean, we're, we're like, hey, how are you? Come on in. It's a showing that's basically just being recorded. Yep. I say yes, because I want somebody to drive by and see a sign and go, there's a video guided tour for that. I'm going to go to their Facebook page. I'm going to go to their website. Uh, so that's one of our hedgehogs. And here again is where we're agent centric, but customer centric. Some of you listening may go, Oh my goodness, I wish my brokerage, you know, I, I wish, well, A, at first they go, that's going to be a lot of money out of my pocket. Our brokerage, myself, we pay for each photo shoot for our agents. Well, that, I mean, that one, I always encourage agents to understand fully what their brokerage is providing. Because when somebody says, I work for this split or I am 100% and I just pay a fee or whatever model that they are working in, which all have value and all have their place. Correct. The agent needs to understand what is the broker paying for and providing because the more the broker provides, the less money out of pocket the agent's going to have. But you may see that reflected a little bit in the split. So- just what every comp every brokerage firm is not apples and apples. And, right. and for you, if you want that com, if you want everybody to have the same model, 
you, I guess you are going to have to provide it because with the independent contractors, you can't require people to do it. Uh, Correct. Actually. So that's, exactly. That's and there's a fine line. Yeah. We ride of that. Right. So what, what I do as a, uh, so we provide that and, you know, we have a deal with our amazing photographer who I got in the business. He was right. doing wedding photos for a while. I'm like, Jamie, get over here. We're doing this now. And, and he's won awards and everything. It's great for real estate photography. Uh, however, so we, we pick up that tab um, and it's about 260 bucks. Uh, so it's not, you know, for every listing and not every listing closes in the office, but that's how I run the brokerage and it pays off because that agent may not want to spend money on professional photos because maybe they haven't had a closing in a few months and like, ah, it's going to sell anyway in this market, right? This is our hedgehog. So I, as a brokerage, pick that up. It benefits our agent, our realtor, right? Because they look like a rock star, but it really benefits the customer. At the end of the day, every client that we've ever had in 10 years has had professional photos and video and that's because of one of the perks that as an office we provide. So, so those are our two big hedgehogs that we always go back to and we get compliments all, you know, from time to time. Uh, and it's good to hear because we don't throw those in everybody's face. We don't tell everybody, every listing has this. We don't tell everybody, you know, all we do, but those hedgehogs kind of creep in the background and that's how you build your culture. And that's how you build your brand in the community. Yeah. Because those things then become threads that go into the other areas of your business. Yes, all we woven together. You're right. Yep. All right. Well, so you have given us an example of a consumer-centric brokerage firm. And there could be other models with that. And, and I'm sure you're going to give us some more suggestions of things that you do and which I'll talk about. Um, so does your firm create other experiences and events? Do you have kind of a... Uh, parties or what, or do you facilitate opportunities for your agents to do things? Do you have anything like that? Or have you, what have you thought through it? So can I give you another good tip? Yeah. Tell me more secrets. Yeah. secret. (laughs) So, so this is from my radio world and all of us, I love being a realtor and talking to other realtors because we all come from different worlds. It's very rare. You find somebody 18 graduating high school. They've been a realtor their whole life. So this is a, a tip from the radio side of things is in radio, very rarely do you ever put on your own event. In radio, you typically piggyback off an event that's already established and you market it and you promote it and you make that event better. So I took that into my brokerage. So we have many of events that we participate in on a regular basis annually, but we very rarely host them ourselves. Go on. What, what ends up happening there is it doesn't cost you as much because as a real real estate office and as realtors in general, we have all these connections, right? And we have the people we can market to and get the word out to. So we become almost a voice for that event. So that helps in terms of getting the word out. We also have connections. Uh, you know, if it's a children type event, you know, we bring in a big fire truck, a monster truck. We bring in balloon animals. Face, we pay for face painting. It costs you three hundred dollars for the day, and you have a line uh, at your booth, right? Yep. So there's all yep. these things that, at the end of the day, cost you dollars, and you're not the official sponsor. But when people go to this event they think of you and it's a win-win because the people that are putting this event on are thankful and want to bring you back every year. Word spreads. And then you have eight other events throughout the year from that one community and it escalates and it's fun, but you've got to, you've got to think and get that wheel going as to don't put on this big event and have one big event a year, piggyback off many of the events in your community And it'll be a win-win for very little money out of your pocket and some time. Well, and then you, you see your clients. If the, if the town or city or even the neighborhood in your city that you work is small enough and the event is local, when you're working at your booth, you, you've probably communicated via email and on your social that you're going to be there. But even if they didn't see that, they might see you there and they're thrilled to see you. So it's also you putting your face out and it, yes. in the public, which is one of my other favorite things, is if people will ju- will show up in public. If you keep going out and you wear your name tag and you wear your clothes and you present yourself helpful in in as a good human in in the community, 
you will get business. And so when you're out like that, there will be people who want to ask and who'll want to set up an appointment. I mean, how many appointments? I would think you get some good contacts from that for future conversations. We do. And because we're a customer centric brokerage, we're also an agent centric brokerage. We don't get a lot of cold leads. The yeah. leads that do come into our office, they're not pouring in. We don't have to sift through a thousand of them to get one yes. <laughs> you know, we spend more of our time in the community, building relationships in the community with local business owners, with charities, whatever. But those that do come in, to our office as what other offices would be considered cold leads, whether it's a call, an email, a Facebook message. It's really not a cold lead because the first thing out of their mouth is, hey, thought of you, we were at the fireworks the other day and thanks so much for bringing those back to our community. Uh, we're looking to sell our home. Boom. They're already committed to us. They're not calling 14 other realtors to do the, the parade. You know what I mean? They love your culture that they've seen in the community and they want to work with you. Yeah. Yes. Okay, there are lots of books written about the customer experience. And obviously, lots of people think that's important, and they're right. Um, <laughs> because when a, if a computer can do it, a computer is going to be able to do it. I mean, that's happening already. And so we have to focus on that human experience. So why do you think focusing on the customer experience is so important? And this kind of seems like an obvious question, and yet, I always love hearing what people say about it because I want to hear your different perspective on why do you think focusing on the customer is so important? It's so important because we are human and we are building relationships. That's what we're doing as, as realtors, right? It's all relationship based. So you've got to be focusing on the customer, on the client, the client experience, the customer experience, uh, You've got to do that because if an app can do it, the app will do it. And to be honest with you, there's all sorts of personality types. You're never going to get 100% of the buyers and seller out there to use a realtor, to use you because you're a nice person and you give back to the community. Some don't care. That's fine. We're not <laughs> going off of them. Until we start turning into Terminator 2 and all these robots are buying houses, people want to be have a person. They want to believe in something. And I'm a, I don't know about you, Monica, do you watch Shark Tank a lot? I watch it sometimes. Yep. I'm a geek. I watch the reruns. As soon as my wife, <laughs> bed, I'm on watching more. And I love the commonality to a lot of these businesses that are, that are pitched and are successful are the giving back portion. There's more to their business than just selling a new gadget. It's, Hey, we're going to donate um, socks to every homeless shelter for every one sale of our gadget or whatever it may be. There's a reason why that's on the incline is because even though technology is all around us, buying into people is ever so more important uh, that that's why those are successful. Our up and coming millennials and the younger generations care more about that than we did because the culture's changing. So you got to focus on the customer or, or you're just missing the boat. Yeah. And to focus on the needs in the community is huge because there is always need. You know, I live right. in a pretty affluent area, but people don't realize there's still people who have need, even though there's a lot of money in the area. Not everybody's that. And not right. everybody is, um, some people who may have had money or even do have money are in positions where they, uh, they end up in a situation of need because of something we don't understand. They're in a divorce right. situation or they ended up in bankruptcy or their money got frozen or, you know, there's so many reasons people end up needy. And when we care for those needs, we end up in a state of gratefulness and in a generosity kind of mindset, which it's, it's a good place to live. It's not always easy, and, right. um, uh, but it's a good place to live. It is. And you're going to have that in your heart too. You can't fake it. There's just some people that don't have the generosity and that's fine. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you know, Scrooge eventually turned, you know, so yeah. it can't happen. <laughs> right? but, and they may do things differently. They may find another good way to do things. And so that's part of what, you know, there's so many opportunities for different business models. And, and that's what you and I just, we want to spur people on to think about those and what's going to work for you. Right. In a different way. And that's again, why I love being a realtor is when I got into the business, I didn't know roughly what I was getting into, but man, did I find my calling. And I think many people say that 
is at the end of the day, have I closed X amount of houses? Yes. But so did maybe that next person. They went through, and again, there's a business model for everybody, but for me and my culture and my personality, my beliefs, you know, you could be up there, you could be driving the fancy cars and say, I closed X amount of closings. What did you do? And then I go, well, I closed just about as many, but I also helped with my green team cleanup in the spring uh, for my community. I was able to donate X amount of dollars to local charities. I was able to, you know, provide fireworks back to my community, which, you know, so I love real estate because it allows you, it's a vehicle to have a job, pay your bills, but also do what you're passionate about and do good because the nonprofit world is tough to raise a family. Like in my case, I've got five kids. I'm doing a lot of my nonprofit work through my real estate business and both are thriving. And that's what I love the most about it. Yeah, that's really, that's terrific. Well, I've been reading the book, The Power of Moments by Chip and Dan Heath. Oh my gosh. Whoa. It's, I don't read books all the way to the end very often. And this one I read all the way through. (laughs) Yeah. The whole thing was good. And they talk about so many ways and many of them not difficult, but some of them, you know, requiring a staff to plan it, you know, so they go from small to large to provide special moments for their clients and for their employees. So do you have special moments or touches that your clients or your agents really love? Do you, have you implemented that in some form in your business that you can give us an example? So I, I love the phrase, and I'm not sure if they mentioned that in that book you mentioned, you know, you, you're reading the power of moments, but uh, I love the phrase or the theory that people really don't remember what you did. It's how you made them feel. It's yep. in your heart, right? So sometimes those big power, you know, those moments that you think, oh, well, I got to show up like Ed McMahon at somebody's door and I'm going to say they just won $500 from, you know, as me uh, from my brokerage or whatever, some contest. Which is a good idea. I mean, that's one way to do it. Right. That's one way to do it. Okay. Do it. However, sometimes it's not all money. Uh Sometimes that's all it is, is seeing something when you're at a craft fair and going, oh my goodness, one of my clients was a huge, uh, her mom passed away and her mom loved dragonflies. And this was amazing. You buy a little dragonfly, you know, Uh. craft for 15 bucks. You show up uh, at the door, you know, and hey, how are you here? And you hand it to him. That's a moment that That will warm the hearts. It's funny because I I preach a bunch of things with my agents, you know, about building relationships. And I've said this for years. I said, if you're a parent of young kids, you could do something for me as Chris. And I'd thank you and I'd be forever grateful. If you go and do something for my child out of the blue, out of the kindness of your heart, I will walk across coal, hot coals for you. (laughs) So again, it's the power of those little moments that happen. Um, You know, you need the big moments too. You need the fun things, the customer appreciation days, uh, whatever it may be. But if you can somehow help facilitate those big, powerful moments that are really just unique moments with each client, with each agent, uh, it it's amazing, and and that's where the win is. But again, that you have to you have to realize that it's not all about the big bang. It's about building that one relationship at a time, but one small moment at a time. They all collectively add up to a one heck of a career (laughs) in real estate and giving back or whatever you want to do. Well, I think the for whether it's the big event or the small one, both of them are intentional. Yes. And that's kind of as I've been processing this book is, well, I can do some big ones. I mean, if I want to or I can think about that or something that I do for everybody, which that requires some thought. And that is good. Right. Period. Period. However, I can also do like you're talking about some of the small individual things, which I've occasionally done. However, if I'm going to do the small ones individually, I still need to cultivate that in my mindset that says, I'm going to pay attention to this person and look for something where I can take a couple of notes where I may not be intentional about getting them something, but I want to be intentional to make a note in case I see something or what if I come across something or even if I can give them a word of encouragement about something, it still requires the intentionality of deciding to look for it. So so all of them have, we need to decide to care about the moments. 
that's it. Care about the moments, care about the relationships. Um, there's a couple of things we always throw out and, and my realtors, they, they hear these all the time, but for some, it may be the first is a, keep the conversation going. So, you know, we always hear about the touches, right? You're supposed to touch somebody, um, you know, every 30 days, once a month to kind of be on their radar, but you want to also, you know, you don't just want to send them something in the mail or have them see your face on a postcard. You need to do something. So when you do bump into them or start a conversation on the phone, the conversation is continuing and they're talking about something that you did four months ago. Oh, right. Yeah. So, you know, you got to keep that conversation going. You need the relationships. And that's where, you know, us, again, going back to agent centric and then customer centric is we try to provide our agents with opportunities to touch their peeps hearts, not just their clients, but their peeps, because their peeps are the, those people are going to be the ones that share and say, Hey, listen, you know, you're thinking of selling. Oh my goodness. You need to use one of my friends. She's amazing. He's amazing. And blah, 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 blah. Here's why. So when they call it's, it's a warm lead and it's not a cold, but it's all those powerful moments. So that's what we work a lot on with our agents to put them in an opportunity to be able to use those powerful moments, even if they're small, powerful moments. If you have somebody who is wanting to do that, you know, and, the, or an agent who wants to focus on it, how, how would you encourage somebody to get started with it? You know, and, and what do your agents feel, you know, when they join with you and you teach them these things, what do the agents feel? And then how does, can you talk a little bit about the process about how people go through this, they come into it and then move into a successful um, customer centric model? Absolutely. You know, we talked at the beginning of this that we're all people, right? Yeah. And that's where we're at, at the core of that. So when we bring on someone and we're a very uh, new agent office, mm -hmm. so that's one of our things we offer them crazy training. That's one of the things behind the scenes that we love to do. But we also have agents that come, you know, with previous experience. But if you're in that position, like you're mentioning, Monica, is that we talk to our agents as soon as they join us, our realtors, and the first conversation really um, after we bring them on and, and do our vetting and stuff is to really find out who they are. Let's dive deep. Um, where did you go to school? What are your passions? What are some of the things you're proud of in life that aren't business related? Did you climb Mount Everest or whatever it may be, right? Um, and then that's the purpose of that conversation. From there, that identifies your passions beyond real estate of who you are, what you're about. From that conversation that we have, then we have another meeting where we build a game plan for our agent. And, and, and you know, people listening to this, if they want to do it on their own, write down all the things that you've done non-real estate related that you're proud of. Who are you? What the heck is your why, right? Besides, I want to sell 50 homes this year. What is your why? And like I said, real estate is the vehicle that can help you be successful, but also fulfill a lot of your whys because there is that much room for creativity in this right. business because yeah. there's so many different models. So I, I think it's each agent can do it themselves. And there's some brokerages out there that do it and facilitate that on behalf of their, their realtors. Well, and I hear you also setting an example. When your agents come in, if you, Chris, you know, your staff takes the time to get to know the agents and ask them good questions and you take 30 or 45 minutes or an hour or, or a meal or whatever, you are modeling for your clients. I mean, you're modeling for your agents what you want them to be doing with their clients. Correct. Yeah. And even though, you know, I'm in the, the broker role, I'm nobody's boss, everybody's a, their own independent contractor, small business owner, right? Um, but you got to lead by example and filter that down. So honestly, again, you know, the line between agent and customer, we're all people, you know, there's a couple of different methods you got to, you know, a couple of small little tweaks you got to do, but at the end of the day, you've got to treat everybody like people, build that relationship. So it flows right through you as the broker. If you're, you know, a broker listening to this, um, goes right to you as an agent. If you're a realtor thinking of this, right to your clients, the continuity, make sure it's real. That's one of the things we tell our agents all the time. You've got to make sure whatever you're doing is real. You know, I'm not a big NFL guy. I'm not going to yeah. go and, and host a big Super Bowl party and hand out. It's just everybody would be like fraud. So yeah. you got to do what's you. And that's why you got to dive deep. What's your why? What are you about? Because people buy you at the end of the day, right? They're hiring you. They're yes. not hiring 
somebody that's going to do a clerical job and like they're hiring you. Well, they want to know you. That's, you know, when, when agents put their bios online, a lot of them are still just, oh, well, I sell real estate and these are the communities that I work in. Well, that's not what the public wants to see. They want to get to know you a little bit. So they do want to know what, what hobbies you have, what charities you enjoy pursuing. They want to find places where they, the, the consumer, can connect with you as an agent because you're going to be spending a lot of time together and they, they like seeing some reflection or some depth in you. And it's unfortunate that there are people who struggle to see the depth and the beauty that they bring to the table. So even having someone like you recognize, yes, you have these things. And with a little bit of conversation, you can bring things out of them that they may not have even seen in themselves. Exactly. It's so true. And it's all at the end of the day, too, what we say, it's all how you brand yourself. Yeah. Um, subtle branding. A lot of realtors don't realize that. And we constantly are reminding our uh, our realtors in our office, you got to brand yourself. When somebody sees your, you know, your, your mugshot, I call it, you know, your headshot yeah, uh-huh, yeah. or, um, you know, whatever they see from you on a postcard or a real estate sign, like you just got to have that branding and you want them to have the warm and fuzzies. You know, there's a reason why Coca-Cola hasn't really changed their logo over the past, how many, you know, the McDonald's, you got to have consistent branding yeah. and you want people to know, have a warm and fuzzy when they see that logo. That's the culture that you're building. That's who you are. And at the end of the day, once you have that relationship and have that trust, it's, you know, everything else is, is just, a, you know, at your fingertips, <laughs> really. Yeah. Well, and this model that you have built lends into the concept of being the realtor for life for yes. a family. Mm-hmm. And when you work with a family, it, to me, it's one of the most exciting things is to work with somebody in the family and then to work with their parents and then their kids are grown and you help them buy their first home. And when you get six, eight, 10, 15 families that you help this way, you're giving them referrals when they move to other parts of the country. That is such a strong and gosh, comfortable. To me, it's comfortable. Again, it's not for everybody, but I love the concept of those long-term relationships. Exactly. And if you're, and again, that's why I love real estate. You could all be coldly driven and and I respect, I'm intrigued by it because it's so foreign to me because I'm on the other end. It works. It's great. But on my end where it's all warm lead, it's, it's, you know, people centric. Uh, Yeah. I've, I, so a very short story, a quick story. story. I, I have a a client that I've helped their family. I can't tell you how many uh, deals over the years. And thank goodness there's tons of cousins, right? Yeah. (laughs) I I met with one of them and they go, Chris, I have like five realtor friends and they're all going to hate me, but I'm going to, I'm using you because A, your track record's amazing. Everybody in my family will disown me if I don't use you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell all my realtor friends that you're my cousin. So... (laughs) I'm like, brilliant. So now whenever whenever their birthday comes around or one of the kids, but whatever, I reach out to them. Hey, cuz, how's it going? That's fun. <laughs> but yeah, that's, but that's relationships, right? You gotta, that's, that's the powerful moments. I, you know, you've got to do things for family members and their people genuinely, and they remember you and they'll make you your honorary cousin so yeah. they can use you as their realtor. But you back it up with all the professionalism and the amazing yes. excellence that needs to be there as well. And that's a, a real quick, that's an under, you know, the, at the core of all of this is being a great realtor, knowing your job, doing it well, keeping the dates, like all that stuff. Um, let's, let's just assume that that across the board, no matter what kind of centric you are, you've got that. You're right. So at the end of the day, you know, you're trying to get the clients and build the relationships and take it to the next level but you also still have to know what the heck you're doing and, yes. and do it well. Yeah, yep. it goes with it. Yeah. Well, are there any other tips you have on the strengths of this model or things that your agents love about it? Any little stories, something else that you'd like to say that I haven't asked you about? Um, I've gotten a lot out, which I love, but find you just got to find your passion and what you want. And that's where I, I love having that chat with some of our agents. It's just, I'm an idea guy. I'm a brainstormer. Yeah. So I love you know, exploring their why and asking them what their why is. And the other thing too, you know, if you're listening is, is it's goal driven. Just so you know, our office, we don't have sales numbers that we hit. 
we have what we call, I'm letting this out of the bag, but it's all to make this profession and everybody just benefit, right? More so secrets. Have, Chris is secrets. opening more the secret box again. Did you hear that noise? That was the vault opening. Um, <laughs> So we have twice a year what we have a call CARE meetings, uh, C-A-R-E, stands for Collaborate, Self-Assess, Rejuvenate, and Envision. They're not uh, checks and balances. They're not us going in and it's not an evaluation from your boss. No, I'm your broker. And we look at the last six months, six months ago, you said that you wanted to do X, Y, Z. You wanted to have, you know, six pending. You wanted to donate to, you know, start up a local dog park. You wanted to do whatever it may be. Um, we, we encourage that. But um, why that's so important is a couple of the questions that we ask. All right, listen, non-real estate related, what are your small uh, goals? Um, and small, I mean by something that you want to do this year or next. And then what's your big goal? Because at the end of the day, you need to have these goals to reach for something. If you don't have yeah. those goals, if you don't want to go to on an Alaskan cruise with your mom in five years because it's her dream and yours too, if that's not on your dartboard, then what are you aiming for? Right. So that's that's one of the things that I would suggest that's a big model to this because you know, we're not so closing centric and numbers driven, it's goal driven, and they don't have to be just closings. I heard once somebody was talking about, um, it was at MAR, the Massachusetts Association of Realtors, big annual um, conference. And uh, the woman on stage had said uh, that she doesn't say I had 15 closings this quarter, I had 15 happy clients this, this quarter. And yeah. she measures her success off a ha off a happy clients, not just yeah. closings and numbers driven. And I loved that because that's a great way to look at it. Yeah, that is good. Well, I'm going to give you the final word. Now you just kind of shared that little thought with us. Anything else you'd like to leave with our listeners as we wrap up our conversation today? I feel like Jerry Springer. He he gets his final word right. <laughs> they cut to a different camera and he's all alone, right? <laughs> So, so honestly, my, my final word is, is just, you got to believe in, in yourself, find your why, what you want to do in life. I know this is a real estate conversation. I know we're realtors at the end of the day, we were selling homes. I get that. Um, however, find your why. And what hit me recently, the most that I absolutely love is there was a saying that said, believe there is good in the world. And then they highlighted the first words of those. It was be the good from believe there is good in the world and hidden in believe there is good in the world is that message, be the good. And that's what we try to do every day. Not only my brokerage, I try to lead from example with my five, my literate children at home. I have yeah. like, it's, that's the mantra. So find your why, even if it's a non real estate related and you'll find your way in the real estate biz to get to your why. Will indeed. Thank you so much, Chris Witten. Thank you. What a blast. So many great practical suggestions from Chris Witten from Rhode Island and Massachusetts. <laughs> Thanks, Chris, for sharing your wisdom with us. We do also have another episode, number 36, with Keith Davis, which I will put in the show notes for you to reference. In that episode, we also discuss brokerage models and more about building a brokerage firm. So if this piqued your interest in building a brokerage firm, you might want to go back and listen to that episode as well for more information from a different angle. If you are a new listener, speaking of going back and listening to old episodes, have you gone back to see what we might have discussed before? Many of our topics are evergreen in the real estate industry, meaning the content goes on beyond the current situation. Some are recorded specifically for that time, but a lot of them have relevant information that is still relevant even in our changing environment. So if you have a question for your business, go check out our past episodes to see if you see a topic that you need, that you're curious about, that might give you an answer that you need in your business. I got a little news. Now we've kind of given some hints about this. However, the Center for Realtor Development has migrated our educational material online and we have added new tools for agents to our new site. Woo woo woo. Learning.realtor. Head over there and check out the new site. And while you're there, you can take a micro course. Yep. And if you recall, we discussed those micro courses with Brent Lancaster. Many of our guests have 
courses at this new website, these micro courses. So you can go check them out there, learning.realtor. I know it is tough out there in this market. Keep going after it. You can do it. Take care of yourself, though. Don't forget about taking care of your health. I know that you all are selling a lot of houses, though, because the stats show that we sold more houses last year than we did the year before. So I know you're finding the houses to sell. So join this selling movement and go out and sell some houses. Thanks for listening to the Center for Realtor Development podcast. If you like what you just heard, we hope you give us a positive rating on iTunes and pass along our podcast web address, crdpodcast.com, to your friends and colleagues. If you have any questions or suggestions for future show topics or ideas about how we can improve, we'd love to hear what you have to say. Just email us at crd at realtors.org. This show is sponsored by the Center for Realtor Development, an online learning platform owned and operated by the National Association of Realtors.